Drupal's component module is a module that lets you create your applications as JavaScript and HTML applications, but then embed them into Drupal as if they were just blocks. Not only that, it allows you to uh, provide parameters and configuration parameters to your blocks, which are passed on to your JavaScript application. Drupal is, as you know, my favorite content management system. And Svelte is my favorite JavaScript uh, UI framework. So why not combine the two? So that's what I'm going to do today. Uh, but for that, we need to first learn the basics of the component module. Component module, as I said, allows you to uh, embed your JavaScript applications as Drupal blocks and supply parameters. So let's get started. First thing we should do is uh, download and install the component module. So I have a Drupal site right here on the left. Let me close others. Yep, it's a very simple, uh, almost empty Drupal site. Um, do I have component in there? No, I don't have component. So let's let me get myself the component. I say Docker. I'm using Docker, of course. Docker Compose, exec. PHP. If you're not using Docker, you can ignore this prefix of Docker Compose exec PHP. The rest of it will be same for you. So we use Composer require, and then we get ourselves Drupal uh, from and the, from Drupal namespace or repository. We get the component project. So this will download the component project. Okay, done. Now if I refresh my extend page and look for component. There it is, the component. Let me just uh, make this a little bigger. So this is the component uh, module and I just enabled it. Once you enable the component module, oops, sorry. Once you enable the component module, what you have to do is you have to create a new um, module which in my case will be web. This is my, this is my Drupal root. This is my web root. And within that, I look for modules and I create a new file and folder. So I'll create a custom folder in which I will create some, a module called component underscore demo. And in that, I have to create component underscore demo dot info dot yaml. This is standard for all Drupal modules. Now, if you don't know Drupal at all, don't be afraid because this is the minimal amount of yaml. You won't be seeing any PHP code and you'll be seeing very little uh, yaml file, uh, yaml syntax. So you give it a name. The name is going to be uh, component demo, right? Description you can give is a demo module to show how to use component I'm gonna have to okay component module okay you have to give it a type the type is going to be module and you have to give it a core version requirement this just memorize this because we wanted to make it compatible with eight as well as nine. So this is how we write it. Okay, so this is it. Only one thing we will add is, let's add a dependency and make it dependent on component project and within that the component module. Okay, so if we do this, this gives us, if I now refresh my left hand side, I get this component demo, you see? So I will enable it in a second, but before I enable that, at this point we have an empty module. We can now start putting components into it. The way we do that is we create a folder and a file. So we create this component folder, components, that's plural. And in that you can start adding uh, component YAML files, but we will put them in um, sub folders. So let's say 
comp let's call it comp underscore demo one and in there we create comp underscore demo one dot component dot yaml all right so i hope you got the basics of this first we created the info yaml file for the module and that was in my modules custom component demo component underscore demo dot info dot yaml and this is what this contains and then we created a folder called components in which we are creating another subfolder called comp underscore demo one and then we create comp underscore demo one dot uh, we just yeah comp demo one dot component dot yml all right so now that i have these things let's create the component you give it a name i'll call it uh, demo component one give it a description if you want although it's not absolutely needed some description of um com demo one all right then you have to give it you can give it type which defaults to block and the other option is library but i'll give neither and it defaults to block at this point um let's let's be done with this yeah save it and enable this component demo so i enabled it at this point if i go to my site of course there is no evidence of anything really but i can add this component in block layout if i go to block layout and place block under content and if i say look for demo there it is demo under demo component one this is the name that i have okay um i will place block i could display title or i may choose not to but let's say yes once we do that and go back to site you got this demo component one at this point this block and this component doesn't do much so first thing you should know is that you can create an index.htm file now i don't like this in the, so here let me show you um so you create you can create an index.htm file if i create a new file or index dot htm but i absolutely hate uh, this kind of uh, naming convention where you call it index dot htm i'm going to call it index dot html so since i decided to call it my own name i do have to go back into the component descriptor and give it a template directive so template index dot html um if i wanted to omit the template i would have to template uh, template directive so then I, I i would have to call this index.htm which is a very bad name so i choose not to do that now here whatever html you put will become the body of your component so let's do that so we say hey h3 this is um whatever demo component 1 and we could just uh, create ul three li let's say so 1 2 3 so right there i was using the emmet syntax which vs code nicely supports and if i refresh nothing happens in order to actually see the effect i have to flush all caches and now when i flush the cache picked up the template this is the temp component 1 this is the h3 for that and this is 1 2 and 3 the ulls so so this is what we are getting with component now you may say okay well you got some html uh that's nice but that's not really what makes a component components need to be dynamic 
That's right. So these, one thing you have to remember is components are dynamic, but they are client side. Uh, these are meant to be JavaScript applications. So let's create a JavaScript file. Uh, I will right click and say new file, say script.js. And in here, let me just put a log statement. Um, I am script.js. Okay, save it. And this doesn't add it to the component just yet. What, I, what you have to do is you have to create a JS section under which you give the key as script.js and the value can be empty object. Now there are other options that you could put under it, but right now we'll just start with this. Once you do this, and of course you have to clear cache, which I will do here. Uh, let me clear cache using trash, trash CR. Once I do that, and I go into inspect element, I want to see what happens on my, uh, oops, looks like something is, oh, okay. Let me talk this to the left side, yeah. So why is this uh, still not docking properly? All right, I'll just uh, resize this. Hmm. For some reason it, it's not, it doesn't want to resize. Okay. All right, so if I go to console and reload now, this is I am script js so the script has been added as part of this component but what you should further understand is that you can also give uh, this thing has a specific selector so let me sell inspect and in here you see this is my index.html but outside that there's a block id demo component one more importantly there is uh, Inside that, there is this. Let me inspect it again. Yes. So this con div class content has a child. This div with this funny ID and the class comp underscore demo one. This is the div that wraps index.html. So what we are going to do is we are going to target this div because this div is going to receive configuration. Now you might ask, what do you mean by configuration? The answer is, you can provide configuration. Let's provide some configuration. You can provide static configuration. So you can do this. And under static configuration, you can just give key value pairs. So conf1, val1. Maybe conf2 is, is an array, let's say. And this will be one, two, three. These are config values, which you will see where they end up. Let me clear cache. And reload. Now this, once again, let me inspect it. And when you inspect it, the div class content, its child, this particular one, with the class comp underscore demo one, it gets a few new attributes, data dash conf one, and then data dash conf two. As you can see, conf one has a val one, which corresponds to this, and conf two, data dash conf two, has a value that is a JSON array, which corresponds with this. So whenever you have a simple value, string, integer, etc., it will be direct value of the data attribute. While whenever you have a complex value, such as a, an array or an object, then it will be turned into a JSON array. So now we have the JSON array. So now you may say, okay, this is uh, okay, I guess, but is it that useful? But it can get much more useful if you convert the static configuration into form configuration. Let's turn this into 
form configuration. And at this point, you can have another more configuration values like conf3, but these are form, these are, if you know the Drupal forms API, these can be turned into form elements with type equal to, let's say, text field, uh, title equal to, you know, conf3. If you save this and clear cache, at this point, if I refresh and configure block. By the way, just so you know, there is conf1 and conf2. There is no conf3 at this point. But if I go into configure block, let me configure. Oh, there it is. There it is, conf3. So I could give it a value 3 or something like that. Save block. I come back here, inspect it, and you will see that there is data conf3, value 3. This is what makes the component module so powerful. Um, you have your JavaScript app, which is this one, right? And this app can now get these values. Now, how will it get the values? That's, that's a little bit of a challenge. Let's find out. What we will do is we will try to get uh, target this particular div. And the div you can obtain by targeting class block component comp demo one, this class. So get to this div and then from there, get to the content div and from there get to this div, class comp one demo. So you can get all of those things by saying, well, let's do it here first. Um, you could say document query selector uh, block component comp dash demo one. This is the first class, I think. But of course, I have to verify. It's block component comp demo one. This. Let's copy this. I don't want to make any mistakes. Okay. Next, within that, look for content. Within that, look for comp underscore demo one. If you get this object, on this object, there is a special property called data set. And that data set, let me close this. This is blocking. How do I get rid of it? Okay. Yes. So this data set contains the config values that we want. Conf1, conf2, conf3. Okay. So that's that's the selector we are looking for. Let's copy this. And we go back in here. So let's get the the element that we are interested in. That's the element. And then config is equal to element. Sorry, let me spell this correctly. Element dot data set. And we can console log it. Config. Config. Okay. Let's save this and see if this works. Now, we'll have to keep clearing the cache. So let's uh, help ourselves by going to development performance and uncheck aggregation of CSS and JS files. Once we do that, I think things will be better. Let's go back to site, inspect, and in console, we see an error. Cannot read property data set of null. Well, why should that be the case? When we do this, we see the value. The reason is, <laughs> unfortunately, the reason is, this uh, module called big pipe big pipe module which is enabled by default in drupal 
is causing this trouble. Uh, it brings the, the content of the blocks asynchronously. It's not there in the very beginning. And that's why all this happens. So we have to, we have to disable big pipe, which we can do by going to extend Look for big pipe. There it is. Let's uninstall it. We can do it here. Uninstall big pipe. Uninstall. Of course, I can do this with with the dress also, and so that's another way of doing it. But now, when we go back to site and we inspect, go to console, we do see the configuration. Yes. But configuration is coming as DOM string map. If you want it as a thing, regular object, what you should do is you just do spread operator. And now when you reload, it no longer is a DOM string map. It's a regular object. But as you can see, conf2, which is an array, is not really an array. It's a JSON object. JSON representation of an array. So you would have to actually say config dot conf two is equal to JSON dot parse config dot conf two. So this is how you would have to parse out the array. Now when you reload your second one is actually an array, not a JSON representation of an array, but a real array. So this is the beginnings of, so keep in mind, once again, the component module lets you um, embed JavaScript applications like their blocks. And uh, there is a big pipe module that gets in the way a little bit. So you have to disable the big, big pipe module. And um, now you can, use your index.html as the body of your content um, and you can attach your script.js let me show you again this is your script.js uh, which you have to obviously specify in the component yaml file and uh, the script can uh, so here is the script.js the script has access to all of this static configuration as well as configuration form. And uh, this form can be as complicated as you like. For example, let me add a comment four, and this could be type check boxes, and uh, you can give it title choices, choices, and then options can be, you know, Sunday, oops, oh, yeah, let's give it a value like um, Sunday, Monday, etc. Right? Let's start with Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday. If you do this, uh, come back here, go to the configuration, configure block. And let's flush all caches. Now we have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday as our checkboxes. So if you check these checkboxes and save block, then back in here in your console, you will have this Sunday, Monday, Tuesday as again a JSON array. Obviously, this JSON array needs to be converted to um, a regular JavaScript array. So you would have to do conf4. You'll have to parse it out. OK? This is the, uh, so you do this. And back in here, oops, reload. And this time, your Conf4 is no longer a JSON representation of an array. It's a real array, Sunman2, like that. Um, if I go and configure block and uncheck Monday, right, then 
this time Monday will not be in there. See, as you can see. So this can be used. This can be very useful. Now, the biggest power of this is in the next one, next episode of this, what we will do is we will use our own my comp. Okay. Our own, we will invent our own um, web component, our own tag, custom element. So that's next. See you in a bit.